WWE NXT returned to the USA Network, but more importantly, they returned to the 600k mark as we see an increase in the ratings. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Pretty good week for WWE. SmackDown had a very good rating. Raw had its best rating since the Raw after WrestleMania. And now there's even an increase for NXT as the rating is up 16% from last week's. Now, let's not get carried away here. It's still not a great rating for NXT. And the last NXT ratings for a few months now haven't been good. They'd had that spell where they did four consecutive shows within 700 to 800k. They'd one show that almost broke 800k. But of course, that is when they had the, the, the stuff with... Sexy Red and Joe Henry's first appearance. There was things happening back then. Fast forward now. I mean, not a lot is happening. And speaking of Joe Henry, I think that they've just butchered this guy. WWE, their new motto is let's bring everybody in. Let's push them slowly. Let's build them slowly. I mean, that's never really worked. When you look at stars, you want to create them organically. If you see someone that you believe in, you know, you, you push them to the moon. You don't purposely hold them back. You don't purposely keep them down and, and let them just, like, like fade away for years and years. That's not how you create stars. You, you look at all the top guys back in the day. As soon as they started getting over, they would get the rocket ship put on their back and they would get pushed. And we've seen with Joe Hendry. Does the numbers. People are behind them. There's no doubt this guy should be pushed as the next face of NXT if they can agree a deal with TNA to get him to appear more often, but we've seen that they just they refuse to do that and they just want to book Joe Hendry and they probably they probably want to have this guy go a couple of years before giving him a shot at like the NXT North American Championship. But to me that that's dumb. Gone are the days where they, they believed in somebody and they gave them a chance straight from the get go. I believe in Joe Hendry, you believe in Joe Hendry, pull the trigger, push the guy to the moon. You're right. The numbers this guy generates are big. He is obviously the most over guy in NXT. It's not even close, man. Ethan Page is a jobber. He's mid... Man, the, the guy is just mid-card. He couldn't even get in the main event of a two-week, you know, special event show. What are they doing? This guy... Oh, man. Ethan Page sucks. And, and here we actually have Joe Hendry having to fight his way in a triple threat match against Wesley and Pete fucking Dunn. What is the obsession with WRB having jobbers like Pete Dunn, Baszler, Natalia, the Good Brothers? Who's that other job? Ma Mia Yim appearing over two shows? They, they just purposely hold people back. Look at LA Knight. Look how long it's taken for this guy to win a singles title. No, why is Pete Dunne battering Sheamus with a shillelagh on Raw and then on Tuesday he's having to do a triple threat match against Joe Hendry and co? Why out of all the people are we getting that prick to appear twice a week? It just makes no sense to me. You look at Kurt Angle, you look at Brock Lesnar, it didn't take those guys years to win a singles title. Once you know, once they see potential in you, you should get pushed. But nowadays, it just—I mean—they just don't do it like that. They—they they just hold you in the mid card, don't they? And they keep you there. They don't give you wins. You know, you, when you get a win, the next week you have to lose. You can't build momentum. Joe Hendry should have came in hot. Should have came in on fire. And they've just—they've wasted this guy, in my opinion. Almost to the point now where it's like, eh, Joe Hendry. He's just a guy in NXT. But when he first came in. Super excited, super behind the guy, but now he's like, uh, Joe Hendry, who's he going to be taking on this week? Uh, Joe Hendry versus Wesley. Uh, Joe Hendry versus, you know, Pete Dunne. Who, who, who cares? We are talking about WWE here, right? See, people don't want to say, oh, they can't do anything because he's under contract to TNA. Listen here, everybody. WWE is a near billion dollar company, if not. TNA is a Diddy company. They could buy out Henry's contract tomorrow. Yeah, tonight. we are not talking Time Warner of the early 2000s here. We are talking Joe Hendry of Global Force Wrestling, a.k.a. Impact Wrestling, a.k.a. TNA. It yeah. can be bought. It can be done. I Me mean, seriously. See the guy's YouTube numbers, man. See if they just bought his contract and fired him onto the main roster and actually booked him like they should. It, it would pay for itself in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, but uh, for some reason they don't do that, so I, I guess we're just going to have this slow process where everyone comes in, e even you look at Jade Cargill, the way they've handled that, to me she's almost like forgotten about now, Yeah, doesn't feel like a big deal. 
because they came in and they stuck her in a stupid, you know, tag team with Bianca Belair that's dragging on. And when you're constantly facing jobbers, you're you you don't drag them up. You get brought down to their level. That's what's happened with Joe Hendry. See, when Brock came in, he, he wasn't fucking trading wins every week with other lower mid carders. No, he was squishing the lower mid carders and moving on up. Now, I mean, look at Kurt Angle. He came in. You know, how long was it before he won Intercontinental Gold, European Gold? Before you knew it, the guy was a fucking double champion. You know, he, he pushed into the main event. He, he wasn't going 50 50 every week with, you know, guys. Sean Stasiak. Like Sean Stasiak, guys. So. Anyway, the rating this week, I'm just so disappointed with the way WWE book everything. Everything's just so slow and drawn out and dragged out. There's just nothing, nothing exciting. And all these marks lap up, man. They suck Triple H's nose. It's just, it's honestly embarrassing. I can't remember the last thing I watched in wrestling. Like, you know what? That's been booked perfectly. Honestly, I can't. I mean, our job's here to critique it, but at the end of the day, what was the last thing you were satisfied with? I can't remember. On, yeah, you know, I, honestly, I, I can't even think. Everything is just overdone. Even the things that are good, it's like, they could be better. Like, CM Punk Drew, I think, has been good, but it could be way better. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, it's two guys fighting over a fucking bracelet. And it's been dragged out for God knows how long. Anyway, Joe Hendry. You know what, actually, just to, I, I, I think when they did the Firefly Flunhouse and the, uh, the, grave, the Boneyard match... I actually think they were done pretty... Well, actually, the Good Brothers didn't need to be in the Boneyard match. I'll say that. Yeah, but you know what? That's a match. That's easy to do. When you say booking, I always think more in terms of like a long-term well, story. Well, you know, like, yeah. It's, it's easier to get a match correct because it's just a single one-off match. No, you're right. But see, you know, people think, oh, what about Punk Cena 2011? But even that stuff, it was like... You look, look what happened after Money in the Bank. It fell on its arse. They brought Nash in and fucking Del Rio. I think the way they did that was horrible with CM Punk leaving just to come back a week later after they already crowned a new champion. And then you've got two champs. What was the point of that? Like, honestly, like, I mean, I'm trying to think back of feuds, man, in wrestling. Like, M- Michael's Taker, maybe? Is that, the, is that the last true thing that was, like, done the perfectly? I think a lot of Taker stuff at Mania was done pretty perfect. No, yeah, but... I mean, I, mean, I, I can't... They weren't as good as the Michael matches, but... I can't say Triple H Undertaker was pish. No, neither, neither can I. Although but I, I do think the Hell in a Cell match, uh, Shawn Michaels, I thought it was a bit overacting with his super kick and stuff like that. So It was. Anyway, uh, let's talk about people that don't matter. Uh, no, I was talking on about NXT. <laughs> yeah, so this week's NXT rating is up 16% from last week's. Last week did a 534,000. This week did 617,000. So, yeah, we have a, what approximately... 84, 87,000. 87,000. 87,000 increase. There you go. So. It's up, uh, I believe it's the first NXT without the Olympics in a few weeks. So. Yeah, it is, and it's the first NXT back on the USA network. So, yeah, it is up uh, 16%. Um, last week, though, the key demo was 0.16. This week, the key demo was 0.14. So, the key demo is down 12% despite being up 16% overall in the viewership. Weird to see a a swing that big. No, I agree. That is weird. How can it go up 16% but lose 0.02? Well, what happened is a lot of people over the age of 49 tuned in. That's how it works, guys, (laughs) you know. It is what it is. So uh, 18-year-olds, they weren't interested. uh, They weren't interested, but yeah, nah, just back on the Joe Hendry thing for me, this guy should have come in, pushed the top, Personally, I would have him champion already or unbeaten or, or, or put him with top guys. Have him working with fucking Gallas, man. He came in in what, June? Right. You know what, right? He could have won the NXT title. Could, could, have, um, could have lost it the weekend of SummerSlam and could have debuted at the Raw Smackdown after. Well, that's, what, that's how quick you can do it, what's, by the way. What's TNA's excuse? See if they knew WWE... Well, no, that, that is it. See, see, see if they knew TNA... See if TNA knew WWE were hiding this guy. Would you not be putting the TNA belt on this guy? Yep. And, he, and then every time he turns up, he's a TNA champion. And he, and him being on WWE, he's just gonna he's gonna get more exposure. It would just make sense. But no, they, they go with Dolph Ziggler, the safe fucking option, the option that nobody cares about. Dolph Ziggler's won a million titles in WWE. Who cares about a, a TNA championship? Yeah, I don't get it. There's this phrase called "strike when the iron is hot," and WWE don't do that. I would go as far to saying that at the moment, like people are almost just forgotten about LA Knight. I know he's a US champion, but 
Like, P- Ellie Knight was over two years ago. Yeah. Ellie Knight was arguably the most over guy in the roster two years ago. I think we're in an era where years just pass by and people don't actually seem to realise it. You know, the attitude era did not last long. I mean, Triple H has been in charge a few years now. I mean, that attitude era didn't last that much longer than Roman Reigns' title reign. No, which is mad to think about, but that is the reality we're, we're dealing with here. Yeah, everything's so slow and drawn out. Anyway, let's look at the few. So... Most viewed YouTube clip was Joe Hendry is coming for the NXT Championship, got 115,000. Second place, Oberfemi crushes Otis to retain the NXT American title, 108,000 views. Third place, 103,000 views, Pete Dunn, Joe Hendry and Wesley getting a massive fight. So you got two of the top three uh, clips, Joe Hendry's in them. The other clip was Oberfemi crushing Otis to retain the NXT North American title. I would argue the way that's the way that's labelled, the way that's titled, the headline, that's going to get people to click on it, just the, way, the fact that Obafemi is crushing Otis and it's two big guys and people might think that's worth checking out. But after that, we have a big drop-off, fourth place, 58,000, full match between Axiom and Fraser and Chase U, NXT title match, only getting 58,000 views, and then Charlie Dempsey winning the NXT Heritage Cup from Tony D'Angelo, only getting 46,000 views. So we had an NXT tag team title match, with an NXT Heritage Cup match, and if you combine both of those clips together, they don't even get as much views as the lower Joe Henry feud clips. So, and that's two title matches. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. WWE dragging the arse out of this, as always. Like, I can guarantee you, see if Ethan Page, right, that first segment, see if it didn't mention Joe Henry and it was Ethan Page finds out his next opponent, it would have about 35,000 views. Yeah. The guy had a world fucking title match last week, by the way, and he had, he had like, the lowest clip of them all. Like, the lowest fucking clip of them all. No, yo, the world title should draw by itself. And him being the champion should draw just as a plus one. I just don't get it, right? What's the logic? Oh, we've got someone who's over. We've got someone who's popular. Let's take it nice and slow. And let's have the guy sit and just trade wins with other guys in the mid card that aren't fucking over. Let's have him do this for like two years straight. And they somehow think that over that, after two years, Joe Henry will be more popular then than he is now. I, I I I do not get that. That's not how it works, pal. Not honestly, yo. You do you think Ellie Knight's a bigger deal now? No. Or do you think he was a no. bigger deal two years ago? Two years belt? ago. Look at the entertainment business or music business. See when someone gets on the scene, then they go, "We're going to wait two years to we give you like the 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 hottest movie or the, yeah, no, like, no, 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 you release the album so, right so, now. Someone, right? someone's album goes number one, right? It sells like a million copies in the first week. You know what? You're doing really well, so we're going to wait a couple of years. Then we'll set you up for a tour. No, no, you, you go on tour when your album's at number one, yeah. when, you, when you're doing good numbers. Wrestling is the only thing that's like this. But as Triple H said, they're afraid to create new stars. Oh, in case they leave us. Fuck off. I, I just don't get it, guys. Don't really want to spend the whole video ranting about NXT and, oh, they, anyway. and Joe Hendry, but I thought it was a good exact. But no, I don't get it. It's like, it's fucking NXT. It's development. He's not even a WWE guy. Why not take an experiment? I know they don't like to do this, but why not just take Oh, but a- Triple H is Mr. Oh, I'm cooking. I'll try new ingredients. Well, it's the same old bland shite. Well, let's take Triple H out of the equation. Let's say this is Shawn Michaels. Well, why not try it? Why not take a chance? Shawn yeah. Michaels doesn't shit with it, the games H- H- Go ahead. Hold on. See if you're willing to put the belt on Ethan Page after five weeks. A fucking bum. Why would you not take the same risk with Joe Hendry? I don't know. You tell me. Ethan get- Page can't fucking draw a dime. I, I just don't get it. I, I do not get it. You've got a guy that is genuinely over, and they're, they're not going. They're not going to do anything with him. I guarantee you, Joe Henry doesn't win this title. No, probably won't even win the title threat match. I know. But I, I'll be. I'll be fucking Wesley that wins that. Yeah, well, we'll see. But yeah, I, I don't see Joe Henry being NXT champion. Is what it is, guys. Everything's so slow. Everything's so boring. Everything's so drawn out. That, that's the one way you would make wrestling better. See if you just like. See, instead of dragging everything out for over six months, just have it last a month. Yeah. But I think it's lazy writing. No, this just want to... Well, we've got something decent here. Let's make it last a year. How, how are we going to get for Mania to SummerSlam? Oh, how are we going to get for SummerSlam to Survivor Series? A f- like, newsflash, a feud that's happening at Mania shouldn't last to SummerSlam. No. It just shouldn't. No. Like, see, when, yeah. see, see Rock and Austin, like, what they were doing didn't get dragged out to SummerSlam. No. You think, you know, the big... F- they wouldn't get dragged out to SummerSlam. But, uh... Whatever, man. Anyway, guys, there you go. There's your numbers for NXT. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.